Okay, so now we're going to do this bucket. Now, to do the bucket, what form am I going to start out with? Cylinder, okay? So, if you look at this is the cylinder. I'm going to use my lightest pencil. Now, you're going to do the cylinder. All right. The, you start out with a cylinder. I'm going to draw an ellipse at the top. Remember, we want it to be the same on both sides. You want it to be as wide as the one you see up here, you drawn to scale, of the one, the one that's on this cylinder right here on the bucket. Okay? All right? Then I'm going to draw the sides to come straight down. Make sure that the, the, the distance that's right here and here are the same thickness for this to work right, okay? Now I'm going to draw a line that is straight down, and it is perpendicular, not perpendicular, parallel with the edges of the paper. You do not want it leaning one way or the other. All right, and I keep drawing it until I keep the line I want to keep. Then this curve is going to match the top curve. Okay? Then take your pencil and clean up any lines. If you're a messy sketcher like I am, I'm going to erase any lines I don't want to keep. Now, everybody watch what I'm doing. I'm going to draw the top rim of the bucket. So there is a, another ellipse in here that's closer to the edge on one side. And on the other side, closest to me, it's a little thicker. But you're pretty much mimicking the shape that's already there. Okay? Then I'm going to draw these two metal strips. I'm assuming they're metal. I'll put one right here, and it's going to follow the contour of the curve of the bucket or the cylinder. I'm going to echo that or aura it or mimic it, whatever word you want to use. Then there's one that's actually I need to move that. I'm going to put this line on top of that one. If you're not looking at the paper while you're doing this, then you're not doing it correctly because we want it to look like the bucket that's on this paper. So I'm going to draw another metal strip. You want it to follow the curve, the same curves that you followed for the top and the bottom. Really, this should have been spaced out a little bit differently, but it'll work. All right. Then where the handle meets, it looks like they're about halfway in. There's a knob. I think, I think that's a circle. It's kind of blurry. Then you're going to take the handle make it come out and back around and touch where the metal strip is just like that i'm going to go back and mimic that or echo at that to make it look like it's coming from it all right now you want to put the appearance of wood in there okay so, I'm going to go through and make this look like strips of wood or almost bark looking. A 
when it starts up here, let it go down into the next one. They're vertical, little squiggly verticals, okay? Some of these are going to get covered up with dark shades. You want some of these lines to match up like they're going under the, the metal strip. There's also some of that in the, cent in the inside. They're a little bit closer together because it's farther away. All right, so you see my line drawing. Now it's time to make it look more curved and more three-dimensional with shading. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and put my darks in there first. I'm going to start at the, the inside of the bucket. Some of y'all are not paying attention. And it's pretty dark right here. Then there's a shadow on this side. You want to make sure you keep your sharp edge. And look at the picture so you can see what the shadow's doing. It comes over and makes like a little strip right here and comes down across the metal strip to the edge again. Do the circle method. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and put more in here. Alright, and then you see the cast shadow come out from it. And if you look at the cast shadow on the paper, look and see how wide the cast shadow is compared to the height of the bucket. They're the same. So if my bucket is this height, the cast shadow should go all the way out to here. So the buck, the cast shadow and the bucket are the same length. I'm going to go through and make my handle really dark right here. And then it's a lighter gray as it goes out. Now I'm going to use my 2B pencil and go through and put my lighter shades. Please look at the bucket on the picture. Make sure that your lighter grays come out as far as they do on the picture. I'm also going to fill in the inside of the bucket. And a little bit on the rim. and on the metal strip going around. I'm going to go back with my ebony pencil and add some more darks. I'm 
I'm going to make sure my handle is darker than the bucket. Okay, so now I still want to go back in and put the lighter grays. This has a lot more detail to it than the other, so it takes a little bit longer. Now I'm going to take my shading stump. I'm not going to use this a lot, and I'm going to draw with it some. So you watch what I'm doing so you can see what I mean by drawing with it. Everybody look up. All right, so I'm going to pick up some of this shade that's over here. Barely touching it, doing the little circles. I'm going to go through. And then I'm going to make these accent marks. I'm drawing to make the accent marks on the lighter values of my texture marks. I'm using it vertically because the texture from the wood is vertical. Barely touching the paper, and I'm not using over the entire thing. I'm only putting it where I feel like I need to blend it just a little. So I'm leaving some of those white highlights in there. Hold on. All right, then you're going to take your eraser and you're going to clean up the edges to make everything come back in focus. Okay, so I'm going to clean up the edges to make sure I have edges and not lines. And that's good enough. 